lived in San Diego, right there by the beach. I'm a mom with a very beautiful family. My husband is an attorney. We have Abby, she was two at that time. Being a mom, that's my, like, my sole purpose, I think, in life. In 2015, we were really wanting another child. We wanted our daughter to have someone to grow up with. My husband always wanted a son. And we decided to move a little further out to a little community in the foothills of San Diego. You have to drive through windy roads. And, and you finally get this little valley. It is out in the country. At night, you have beautiful clear skies a whole galaxy to look at. It's a perfect house for us. We're living the American dream. But right from the beginning, I had noticed things that I never experienced in any other house that I lived in. I would hear little small things. Where did that come from? What was that? In the beginning, a couple of months, I just dismissed it as naturally as I could. Being a new house, you know, you have to break it in, get to know every court. Oh, that's just the wind blowing against that window, or oh, that's the upstairs heater turning on, or that's the ceiling fan. And then a few months pass, the more and more I would actually feel things more than hear. I would feel like vibrations. I would feel the presence of someone or something. I didn't know what or whom. I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would hear like tiptoes. Or I'd hear like very subtle movements. So naturally I would be thinking it'd be my small daughter coming into the room. And when I'd wake up, no one was in the room besides my husband. But I could feel something near me. Sometimes I could feel the presence of more than one person or something. At first, I thought that there must have been a person who might have passed to the home. It's just a sweet, simple, long lost, departed soul. While this was going on, we did find out that we were pregnant. Oh, you're gonna have twins. We were very excited, oh my gosh. But after that, I would wake up more and more. Every night, I was compelled to get out of my bed and go downstairs. I would just find myself like, looking out the window. I would just sit there and stare out for 20 minutes at the stars. And I would hear helicopters, but I couldn't see them. And it was quite strange, I thought. Sometimes I could feel the presence of more than one person or something. And then the nightmare started. In the beginning, I was just having nightmares of seeing huge bright lights overcome my eyes to the point where it would hurt. And I'd squeeze my eyes, and I could barely see. It was freezing cold wherever I was at. I would freeze up. 
and not be able to move my arms, my legs. And then the fear that overcame me was like a chilling, own cold fear. Something in my body was screaming, wake up, get out of here. But I couldn't move. And then I would wake up and I would be crying, terrified. <laughs> the nightmares were so traumatic that I dreaded going to bed. I would physically have to prepare myself. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. I'm gonna do this. I need to sleep, but nightmares kept occurring. And the fear was so strong. I could feel my heart beat racing to the point where I thought I was having a heart attack. I actually felt like I was dying. I was frozen solid. I couldn't move. And then chilling, bone cold fear. I woke my husband up, shaking him, and I say, I'm so scared, something is in this house. I was so shaken and shattered. I needed my husband to calm me down. We didn't know how to make them go away or stop. During this period, we would go to the doctor and find out you're not pregnant anymore. Baby's gone. It was really affecting our family and our relationship. And now the nightmares started evolving. Each nightmare was getting more intense, more graphic. They were no longer just bad dreams. They were full-blown terror attacks. <laughs> 